This video begins a look at the hip bone with the ilium. What are the three bones that fuse to give us the hip bone? Before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge a wonderful website whose images I will be using, the Anatomy Standard. I provide a link to the website in the description below and also at the end of this video. Here are both hip bones suspended in the orientation they would have in the body. We are going to look first on the lateral side of the right hip bone. Here is a closer look at the ilium, the superior bone. You can see some of the labels that the creators put on the image. We can divide the ilium into the body, which is the part of the bone that contributes to about two-fifths of the acetabulum, or socket of the hip joint, which I described in a previous video. Of course, this is an important part of the bone because it provides the platform that enables movement of the lower limb. But you can't have movement without muscles. And above the body, the ilium expands to provide a broad surface for muscle attachment. This expanded part of the ilium is called the ala, which simply translates into wing. The narrow superior edge of the ilium is called the iliac crest. Muscles of the abdominal wall and fascia attach to the iliac crest. Projecting from the ilium, there are four spines. These spines are not that dramatic or obvious, but they are called spines nevertheless. Now we need to give each of these spines a name. For obvious reasons, two of the spines on the anterior side will be called the anterior iliac spines. The superior one of the two is called the anterior superior iliac spine, which is a mouthful, but it can be abbreviated to the, its acronym ASIS. The inferior spine is called the anterior inferior iliac spine and can be abbreviated AIIS. On the posterior side, we have the posterior iliac spines. And in a similar fashion to the anterior side, we call the superior spine the posterior superior iliac spine, or PSIS. The inferior spine is called the posterior inferior iliac spine, or PIIS. If we look closely on the lateral surface of the ala, we can see subtle linear elevations, which are called lines. These lines indicate where connective tissue that surrounds and separates the gluteal muscles attaches to the bone. These red lines roughly indicate where the actual gluteal lines are located. They are named according to their relative locations. You have the inferior gluteal line, which does not have its opposite, in other words, the superior gluteal line. Then you have the anterior gluteal line, which does have its opposite in the posterior gluteal line. These lines indicate the boundaries for the attachment of the three gluteal muscles. If we shift to this image from Gray's Anatomy, we can see the precise location of these gluteal lines. Between the inferior and anterior gluteal lines, we find the origin of the smallest gluteal muscle the gluteus minimus. Then between the anterior gluteal line, the iliac crest, and the posterior gluteal line, we find the origin of the gluteus medius. And finally, behind the posterior gluteal line, we find the place where the largest gluteal muscle, the gluteus maximus, attaches to the ilium. Before we leave the lateral side, let's point out a few more features. There is a bump along the iliac crest on the lateral side, which is called the iliac tubercle. And there is a deep indentation right above the body on the posterior side, which is called the greater sciatic notch. The sciatic nerve passes through this notch. Now let's look on the medial side of the bone. First, there is a line that is part of the pelvic brim called the arcuate line simply because it arcs or bends. Above the arcuate line, the surface of the bone is smooth and concave. 
This is a kind of depression in the bone and is called the iliac fossa. A muscle called the iliacus will attach here. Posteriorly, there is a joint or articulation between the ilium and sacrum of the spine, the sacroiliac joint. This surface has a resemblance to an ear, and for this reason it is called the auricular surface. Auricular is an adjective that means like an ear. The joint between the ilium needs to be strong and stable. This strength is achieved by connective tissue that attaches to the bone. This attachment is evidenced by the roughened surface of the bone that is called a, a tuberosity. This tuberosity is called the iliac tuberosity. This brings our video to an end. If you'd like to take a quiz, there is a link to a quiz in the description below. Here are the image attributions. And finally, we can't end a video without another wonderful video brought to you by my cat, Apollo. Okay, Apollo wanted some time off. He's threatening to unionize. And he asked his girlfriend Penelope to fill in for him. So here's Penelope at the food bowl. Isn't she cute?